He made them after learning that President Obama would not endorse him. Well, it's a controversial campaign strategy, and we are getting new reports today that it may be working. Democrats supporting third-party candidates in an attempt to split the Republican vote. Divide and conquer, if you will. Nicole Wallace is a former White House communications director, also author of 18 Acres. And Simon Rosenberg is the former campaign advisor to Bill Clinton and now president of the left-leaning think tank NDN. All right, panel, thanks so much for being here. So, Simon, let me start with you. Uh, yeah. All's fair in love and, and war and politics? I think so. I mean, I, I don't think we'd be having this story on the air right now if the Republicans weren't actually worried that the election wasn't as strong and as good as they'd hoped to be. I mean, this sounds like they're nervous about winning these House races. They're complaining about some controversial tactics. That's a sign of weakness, not a sign of strength, I think, Megan. And uh, that's why we're here today. Nicole, uh, the Republican Party came out and said, uh, this is from the National Republican Con Congressional Committee, Democratic incumbents realize they won't win re-election by their own merits alone, so they've stooped so low and resorted to unscrupulous and desperate tactics like these to deceive, mislead, and lie. Does she have a fair point, or is that just sour grapes from somebody who might wind up on the short end of this strategy? Look, uh, this tactic reeks of the desperation that I think was apparent in everything you've seen the Democrats do in the last 72 hours. And I think when you see numbers like what they saw, what they woke up to in today's New York Times, where the woman's vote in the last 30 days has swung 12 percentage points. Women favored Democrats over Republicans by 8 percentage points 30 days ago. Now they favor Republicans. The desperation seeps in. And, you know, I, I think it usually backfires. And I think that's why that's not a tactic employed uh, more often. And, and I guess what I wonder is, is it even, I know it's not ethical, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't work very well, but I wonder if it's even legal or if they run into any. Of course it's legal. I mean, come on, Nicole. I mean, you know better than that. I mean, the, the thing about this is that this is, this is all fair in love and war. This is clearly legal. I mean, this is, you know, the Republicans were the party that wanted to loosen the rules in American politics. And we've got now much more in play than we used to have. And it's incredible to me after they moved $25,000 contributions from the RNC to these multi-million dollar contributions that are playing out all over the country for them to be bitching and moaning about this clearly legal within bounds tactic. I mean, the, the thing is, in elections, it's about who gets the most votes. And, and this, is a, this has been a tough election cycle. There's been brutal tactics deployed on both sides. Welcome to politics, guys. This is the way this thing works. Nicole. And I think what, what I feel is that now you're feeling the Republicans getting worried that they're not going to win the House, and they're starting to try to create excuses for why they didn't put the ball over the goal line in the final few weeks. Nicole, the, D, the DCCC says they don't admit that this is actually a strategic design, and they say they're, all they're trying to do is, is help identify candidates who are outside the mainstream. And yet you've got examples like... Uh, in Colorado, Deb, in the control room, this is, uh, I think, our, one of our, part of our second call for. The Colorado 3rd um, District, Democratic Representative John Salazar, he's in a close race with the GOP nominee, Scott Tipton. And there's a flyer that's featuring the libertarian guy, Gregory Gilman, who, uh, talking about how he's, he, his first act would be to drastically reduce the size of government. This guy, Gilman, has reported no financial activity this campaign. He's done nothing. He's basically got the snowball's chance and you know what to win this race. So if it's not really about, if it's just about highlighting their extremism, you know, why would he go, why would they help a candidate who's not even on the radar? Look, I, I think this is, this is cynical. I, I really think that um, whatever Simon is smoking that he thinks Republicans are bitching and moaning, Republicans are hopeful, they're optimistic, and they're confident in the outcome on Tuesday because Obama's agenda has been so poorly received by the vast majority of Americans, not extreme, but by independent voters, by mainstream Republicans. And the fact that you've got independent voters agreeing with Republicans and agreeing with the Tea Party is the largest, I think, almost the mainstreaming of the right that we've seen in a very long time. And when you hear Michael Reagan speak like he did to you just a few minutes ago about how this movement is at its core, Ronald Reagan's vision for the role of the federal government in American life, I think tactics like this at the end of the day will either backfire or, or when held up against everything else that's going to happen next Tuesday will be just a drop in the bucket compared to the overwhelming victories that Republicans and Republican Tea Party candidates are going to see Tuesday. Simon, what, what, speak to that point of that, that, that the Republican uh, Congressional Committee spokesperson says about they say that the, the, the Democrats realize they won't win re-election by their own merits alone. So they've got to do this. And you say it's all about who gets the most votes, and that's true. You know, at the end of the day, the Democrats just want to win just as badly as the GOP does. But 
You know, she sort of says, why not win on the merits of your candidate rather than because trying to split the other vote? Megan, and, I'm, and by the way, I'm sorry we're not getting to talk about Charlie.